Uh, so this is a, this is a very simple Wi-Fi camera, a one-dimensional one, which means that it's only it's only taking a, a picture in one plane, basically making a line of of pixels if we image the data. The cam is a directional antenna, uh, mm -hmm. tuned for 2.4 gigahertz, um, and uh, as it rotates, it's, it scans for, for networks and records signal strength that it sees on uh, base station names and MAC numbers, mm -hmm. so that we can use this for visualization. Um, and if it wasn't for the rain, we would be taking this to Tempelhof and mm -hmm. doing the imaging there. So what exactly do you get from the scan? Once it's finished its 360 degree round, or what does it deliver then? Or what do you do with it, what it delivers? We, we, I mean, we get um, a list of thousands and thousands of readings uh, for, each, for each network that we see. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, it's, since, the, uh, since the antenna is very highly directional, so it only sees in the direction that it points, sort of like looking through uh, the tube in a way. Mm -hmm. um, so what we need to do with the data then is to map uh, this list of sequential data into uh, a circular pattern, basically, based on the direction of the antenna mm -hmm. at every reading. And mm -hmm. with this then we can do a visualization, sort of uh, a map of the horizon, mm -hmm. if you will. Of the Wi-Fi horizon. Yeah, exactly. uh -huh. But uh, as far as I figured, so far, like, there's never the urge to create a real, I don't know, like a map of the Wi-Fi's or to create some kind of like topography of something or represent something, but it's more like, yeah, but what's very experimental? But I think that is, uh, I mean, Martin has been uh, doing sort of similar things and they, uh, that has been done for practical purposes as well, with uh, like war driving, where you uh, drive around with a Wi-Fi scanner and a GPS and map where different networks are. And there, I mean, we even have location services based on that. But it's quite a different thing, different thing to uh, uh, to map something uh, location by location and build a two-dimensional map of that on one hand, or uh, making a, well capturing a projection of something on the other hand. And of course, this one is only one-dimensional, but when we do this two-dimensional, mm -hmm. uh, so it would be moving uh, up and down as well, mm -hmm. uh, then we actually basically do something which is equivalent of a pinhole camera, uh, but uh, in a different electromagnetic spectrum than uh, the visible light, so rather in the 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, and doing the same thing as a camera, removing one dimension, taking something three-dimensional and capturing it onto a two-dimensional mm -hmm. um, image. Mm -hmm. Which is yeah, quite different from point measurements, where you just take one-dimensional values at different locations and then construct them. I mean, mm -hmm. it's two different ways of seeing it. Mapping it will, uh, yeah, of course, that give you a topography or a map of the landscape. Well, what we try to do is to see, sort of in a way, like uh, if we had eyes that could see radio waves, what would it look like? Mm -hmm. It's more sort of in uh, a visualization in that, in that sense. Mm -hmm. I think on the second day you were also like um, translating waves into sound or, or trying to kind of read sound. Or tra how, is that, how is your relation to kind of like um, visual appearance of data and, I don't know, audio sort of translation of waves and data? Yeah, that is a good question. I think both is uh, both is very very interesting. But it's uh, and both I mean both are very functional as as tools as well. Uh, in I mean you you could you could say of course that the translation to sound is uh, the same thing in a way. Like if if our ears did not hear uh, the change of air pressure, but rather had. Uh, well, received <coughs> electromagnetic waves, uh, then this is the way it, it, it would hear it. But um, the simplest way we do it is basically uh, like building AM radio receivers for listening to radio waves in other spectrums than our normal uh, radio transmissions are. And that also becomes a tool for investigation and uh, sort of uh, yeah, learning and exploring how different uh, 
networks uh, behave and work as well? Because mm -hmm. it's quite different if you listen to, say, GSM or Wi-Fi or uh, uh, other kind of data, which is, I mean, there's lots of data from satellites being transmitted. And you quickly become aware of that the spectrum is very populated. You have signals everywhere. Mm -hmm. And this investigation, you call it, that's basically your artistic practice, kind of like find, finding kind of like means of like discovering, in a way, that's how I imagine it. We could say that. I mean, I, I hesitate calling myself an artist, uh -huh. but uh, I mean... Uh, Why is that? Well, you know, in one way, I, I mean, I've always been doing um, experiments of different kinds, building hardware, building software, and, and like learning and exploring, and uh, some of that becomes visualization, some is other stuff. Um, uh, some end up in an art exhibition, and then of course I will be uh, in that function or with that, that role in that context, I would be the artist if I made mm. a piece. But it's, uh, for me, it's just one, one of uh, a bunch of experiments. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know how to label myself. <laughs> uh -huh. But does, like, I don't know, the art context carry, or the art structures, do they carry things that you want to be? You wouldn't want to be, I don't know, affiliated with? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I mean, I guess historically I have had, uh, been a bit worried about pretentiousness, if you will. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but um, um, I think that might rather be uh, that I did not really know what... I mean, because in, in, the, in the scene I... In, in the part of the art scene which I do stuff now, I don't see... The, the things from the fine art scene that I did not like so much. Yeah. So um, I don't. I mean, I don't have a, a problem with that really. But it's all. I mean, I, rather I would say I have a problem with putting labels on, like uh, saying that I am one person. I do one thing, which is of course not true for anyone. Uh, but um, also one. I mean. Yeah. Rather, the, like the art products are just one expression or one context uh, in which the same product might might appear. Mm -hmm. um, and many products have been been uh, used in, in like in exhibitions or in educational purposes, and also in uh, I mean uh, yeah, educational exhibitions, for example, or in like. Um, medical demonstrations and then also in art context mm. of course you i mean you you i will be presented in different ways in all these contexts as well because they would see my role differently but that's the funny thing is like it touches art but it isn't it touches science and like official research yeah but in a way isn't that that's kind of like somewhere this in between probably whatever it is yeah i guess one um one thing with these um kind of explorations is that I mean, if you were looking at it from an engineer's point of view then you would try to do something practical and useful or build a product whereas this is sort of almost trying to avoid doing practical things mm. and rather rather try to make um, thought-provoking things or things that raise our awareness about properties about, uh, in the world that we live that, and the things that we cannot see that we build around us or sort of an alternate reality in a way. But isn't the paradox in the workshops that you've already becoming that professional or savvy that you actually manage to have that your specific knowledge that you can actually pass on or collaborate with the others? There's this kind of nice thing that while you avoid each, well, avoid, while you only touch each other discourse layer, you create your own little, your personal artistic discourse, kind of like. I guess, but that's in the eye of the observer as well. I mean, um, of course, it, I mean, in a sense, I, I would have a, I mean, if you look at things that I've been doing the last 15 years, you would also see uh, a bunch of uh, lines uh, that I follow in, um, that you could you could call a, a discourse or or so on. Yeah. Of course, I mean, of course, there are things that interest me more than others, and um, it's an iterative process as well. You, I mean, you take one step further every time when you when you explore things. So that's a nice um, thing with uh, a workshop and an event like this. Also, that it, it gives us the opportunity to to spend time working with things that we are interested in in the context where we share with and invite other people uh -huh. that. Um, I mean, it's not 
also it's not I mean it's not teacher student situation it's I mean people bring their own projects and uh, hardware and experiments and uh, uh, want to do things and, and we can all help out exploring and experimenting I'm fine thank you